Let's talk about the markets generally uh, and what you're buying specifically. What do you think? Well, the markets are obviously in a very tough place. And one of the major reasons that I don't think we talk enough about is that there's alternatives to equities for the first time in decades. So if you're a typical uh, fiduciary and you're, you've got a bogey of 6% to distribute, let's say, in a pension plan, uh, for the last 20 years, it's been extremely difficult to use treasuries to help you achieve that goal. And so, generally speaking, people put less weighting into fixed income, particularly risk-free risk income, in a, in a two-year treasury, which was under 50 basis points for a long time. That's not the case today. And for the first time in the last couple of months, I, like many others, have started to tiptoe through the tulips back into what I did decades ago, corporate credit, single, double, triple B, bonds again, even two years, because, frankly, preservation is my mandate. Performance is important, but preservation is the primary mandate. And right now, 400 basis points plus change looks pretty good for the next 24 months, given the uncertainty on the Fed's decisions coming up and how, and how deep and how long the recession will be. And so that is part of the reason today you see these dramatic sell-offs, because People just like me are spending up to 40% of their day, like I did, looking at bonds. It's been so long. Yeah, no, it has been really long. Let me go out on a little bit of a tangent. I know you were aware that we had our Delivering Alpha conference yesterday. And the tangent is this. Quite a few of the investors there were talking about um, eventual, maybe not immediate, but eventual huge opportunities in distress debt, which is a whole other vector uh, than what we're talking about here, ab about capturing a 4.1%, 4.2% in a Treasury. What do you think? Yes, eventually, not yet. Yeah. We haven't seen those spreads blow out enough yet. I mean, if you have real guts and you think that we're going to have a soft landing and you think the Fed may pause in Q1 of next year, there's money to be made in stress. But not for me, I mean, I, I'm not going to take that risk because... When those, when those credits blow out, they really blow out. They blow out in, in absolutely stratospheric ways, blood in the streets. That's when you have great opportunity. We're talking about 20, 30 percent returns. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you've also got to look at the covenants. You have a, you know, people forget there's a lot of work in stressed corporate debt. You've got to look at the covenants. You've got to figure out the litigation, the chance of bankruptcy. I, I've done that before, but I've really got to dust up my chops. It's been so long. Right. Right. Get, get your primer out, I guess. Uh, so let's talk about the stock draft, because actually it's been very illustrative this week, uh, talking about the stocks that the picks that were made when the draft happened and where people are now. You're in fifth place, middle of the road. Your uh, performance is down, what, 20 percent. Would you stick right now for, say, one of your choices, Moderna, Kevin? Yeah, I would. I mean, you know, the thing about the draft, and, and I've been privileged enough to have won it once, you have to take outlandish bets to get to the top of the heap. Now, right now in the horse race, I'm happy to be sitting in the middle because it won't matter till April when I plan to win this year again. And I'll <laughs> tell you how I'm going to do it. Right now, ARC has been decimated, down almost 70% on the year. Kathy Wood has a very concentrated, in my opinion, very difficult mandate until things turn around in her incredibly volatile stocks. Now, if you want to get a chance to win, you've got to get a funky chicken position like that, because when it turns, it just sweeps by Wait, all the other horses. Wait, does that mean that you think it's going to turn before April? Well, I'm optimistic that what will occur is we will bottom out. What we needed to happen is happening. Apple broke 150. That's going to be baby with the bathwater, throw in the towel, all the analogies you want. That stock's going to 120, where I'll buy it again. It's going to be brutal. Grown men are going to weep in the streets because that is the most indexed stock in the world. Everybody owns it, as you just detailed in the form yeah. of peace. And so do I. Everybody owns Apple. But now it's broken that 150 support, and it did it really concisely, and it's going to go south. And so when that occurs, that we need something like that to bottom tech. And that's the granddaddy yeah. consumer slash tech stock. So right. that so would the, be a good thing. So the producers... Then I hope it the, Correcting me, the stock draft ends in February, not April. So hopefully all of this turns even then sooner. All, then <laughs> if that's true, all yeah. bets are off. All right. Kevin O'Leary, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, Mr. Wonderful.